Okay, so a hemostat or a hemostatic forcep, uh, you notice that there's two different spellings here. We can use our word parts to determine what this instrument is for. So stat or static can mean uh, stoppage or stopping, and hemo is referring to blood. Uh, so this is a locking instrument to grasp and ligate blood vessels. Uh, so these guys kind of look like scissors, um, and they've got something called a box lock. Uh, and that, those two things, they click together to, to seal off that instrument so that it doesn't open up again. And then often they have curved ends. They could have straight ends as well. And on these ends, if you look, they have these little striations all the way down. So those striations help the, the instrument to hold onto those blood vessels uh, so that they can be uh, stopped from bleeding. So ligate, we saw up here, to ligate is to tie or to strangulate. <clears throat> so basically we're just uh, tying off those blood vessels so that they stop bleeding. Okay, so a retractor is an instrument to hold back tissues. Uh, so there's two kinds. There's a hand retractor, which kind of looks like this and has like hook ends on this side and flat ends on this one. Uh, so you could use that to put inside the um, surgical wound and hold it open. There's also ones that look a lot like this. Uh, they're like a uh, scissor style and those ones can, um, you don't need an assistant for those. You can just use those independently. Uh, so the word scalpel can refer to the scalpel blade or the blade and the handle together. Um, so I'm sure you guys have seen a scalpel because they're pretty common in, um, in uh, like science classrooms if you do dissections, but it basically looks like this. So the blade and the handle. Um, scalpels are super duper sharp, so please be careful if you are handling or scalpel blades. A sling is a bandage for supporting part of the body. Uh, often we'll see humans with their arm in slings if their arm is broken. A splint, so I said that we don't really use casts very often, we use, tend to use splints instead. A splint is a rigid appliance for fixation of movable or displaced parts. Uh, so it's like a, there's spoon splints, uh, they look kind of like a spoon, and then the paw goes here, and then the rest of the leg goes up here, and then that holds the leg straight so that the bones can heal underneath. Okay, so our next term is a swaged needle. So a swaged needle is attached to suture material, just like that. So our other option would be um, an eyed needle. So a needle like that, that has the suture material going through. So this is probably what we're more familiar with if you've ever done any kind of hand sewing. Uh, but the, a swage needle, this is how lots of suture material comes uh, prepackaged. So then the doctor doesn't have to waste time trying to thread a needle, they can just start suturing right away. Okay, so a towel clamp uh, is an instrument to occlude, or sorry, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, a tissue clamp, not a towel clamp. A tissue clamp is an instrument to occlude or secure. Again, these guys look a lot like hemostats, they're just bigger. Uh, a tissue forceps or a thumb forceps, these guys look like tweezers. Um, so they kind of have this kind of shape. Often on the end, they have little teeth um, and it's for gripping tissues. So yeah, non-locking tweezer-like instrument for grasping tissue, exactly. Uh, so they have little, um, they're called rat tooth forceps when they have the little teeth like that. So a towel clamp is a surgical instrument to clamp towel. Uh, again, these guys look a lot like this, but they're um, curves at the end, so circle, circle. Um, their curves go in and they're real, those tips are really, really sharp. So if you are working with a towel clamp, uh, make sure you don't get poked by it because they will hurt you. Uh, so these guys have to be sharp because they have to go through all the draping and uh, attach into the animal's skin uh, during surgery. So that's a towel clamp, they clamp the towels. Okay, so that's it for our surgical um, instrument terms. So our last topic is surgical words, uh, or sorry, laboratory words that we're moving on to. down a little bit here. Uh, okay, so agglutination. 
Uh, do you hear in there that glue sound, right? So agglutination is when cells or particles are stuck together like glue. Uh, so it's a clumping of cells or particles. A centrifuge is a device used to spin samples that separates them by weight. Uh, so we use centrifuges um, to spin down blood samples. So if I have a blood tube and I have it filled with whole blood and I put it into the centrifuge, it will, um, I, I'll spin it and it'll separate. So I'll have down here red blood cells, I'll have a layer of white blood cells, and then I'll have my serum or my plasma in here. Uh, so it separates everything out by weight. We can use these for fecal floats, we can use a centrifuge for um, urinalysis or to spin blood. So a differential, sometimes it's called a diff for short, that's when um, a technologist is going to count uh, all the white blood cells that they see in a blood smear. So we'll make a little smear of blood and then we're gonna look, we're gonna count the first 100 that we see and we're gonna classify them by their type. So there's five different types of white blood cells. Uh, so we record how much of each one is pre present and then uh, we can um, show that to the doctor who can make uh, clinical judgments from that. Okay, so an ELISA test. So ELISA stands for enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. An assay is a test. Assay means test. Uh, so for this type of test, uh, it's looking for either antibodies or antigens in the sample. It's not necessarily blood. You can use um, fecal samples with ELISA tests. Um, I think there's some urine ones as well. It's usually blood, but there are def definitely feces ones as well. Uh, so basically this is just a test that's looking for some kind of illness. A fecal float is a lab procedure that finds parasite eggs in a solution. So again, I take a test tube, I fill it up with a poop slurry, and uh, I put it into the centrifuge. I put a <clears throat> I put a uh, glass slide on top and when I centrifuge it all the solid poop material goes to the bottom I'll have kind of a uh, you know just murky poop solution up here and then up here all the eggs that are present are gonna float right to the top and stick to that slide then after I can put the slide onto or I mean the cover slip, I can put it onto a glass slide and I can look at it under the microscope and I'll see all those eggs under the microscope. So that's a fecal float. We call it a float because those eggs float to the top. Okay, and our last couple terms, we've got a fungassay. So again, do you see that assay in there? Assay means test. So a fungassay, we're looking at a culture of fungus. So uh, more often than not, we're looking for a ringworm with that one. Okay, so HGB is an abbreviation for hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is in red blood cells and it carries oxygen. So um, we need to know hemoglobin levels in an animal so that we know their capacity to carry oxygen throughout the body. Okay, a couple of other abbreviations here. A PCV, it stands for packed cell volume. HCT is an abbreviation for a hematocrit. These are both the same test. They just have two different names. It gives us a percentage of red blood cells in a blood sample. So I think, I feel like we talked about this in our abbreviations or something maybe, but basically we take a small little micro hematocrit tube and we fill it up with blood we spin it into in a centrifuge and it'll again separate by weight we'll have red blood cells down here and then the rest of this will be the serum or the plasma we hold it up to a little scale and it tells us how much percentage of red blood cells are present in that uh in that sample so this is a measure of anemia. If we have a really low sample, like I've seen as low as like 9%, uh, that's an animal that's in dire need of a blood transfusion. <clears throat> so sediment, I'm running out of uh, 
drawing room here. I'm gonna flip my page. So sediment uh, is something that we're looking for in a UA, which means urinalysis. So a urinalysis, um, you can look at the, uh, the word parts here. Lysis is like a, a breakdown, um, and then urine obviously is urine. Uh, so what we're doing with the UA is we are separating the urine into its parts so that we can look at it. One of the parts that we're gonna look at is the sediment. So again, we have our test tube, we fill it up with urine, we spin it down, we end up with this little bead down here of sediment and then a whole lot of uh, urine, which at the, once the sediment's removed, this is called the supernatant. So this sediment, I'm gonna dump off all of this, I'm going to mix this all up, and then I'm gonna put a little drop on a slide, a little drop, and then I put a cover slip over it and this all spreads out. Then I'm able to look at that sediment. I can find things like debris. So sometimes there's like fat or cells or cell fragments in there. Um, just like um, epithelial cells, which are like the lining of the bladder. Um, I could find crystals in there. So if I find crystals in there, uh, I could have an animal that has stones in the bladder, uh, or perhaps it's a cat um, that has crystals and they're blocked, um, so they're not able to urinate. Uh, we can find blood, we can find red blood cells and white blood cells. We can find bacteria, which would indicate an infection. So basically we're looking for stuff in the urine that's not normal and not supposed to be there. And that is all our terminology for uh, this section. So uh, after this, we've officially covered everything now for test two. <clears throat> So hopefully your knowledge of your word parts helps you studying a lot of these terms. They are, uh, a lot of them do use those word parts. So hopefully, hopefully that is helpful for you. Um, of course, if you do have any questions after this video lecture, please make sure you do ask them either in the virtual classroom or the chat, or you're welcome to email me as well. Thank you so much.